and how this information is going to inspire us to make whatever changes is necessary to protect the future of the black family. First of all, on my extreme left, we got Dr. Nathan Hare. Dr. Nathan Hare has been around for quite a while. As a child, I remember Dr. Hare as being the founder of the Black Scholar magazine. Dr. Hare is also a psychologist and a, social, a, a sociologist and a psychiatrist and has a uh, into the black people struggle here in the United States and in the world if you haven't taken any of his classes. Next is Dr. Ray Richardson. Dr. Ray Richardson, uh, the former head of the Black Studies Department and a distinguished person in her own right, uh, teaches several classes here. Uh, she's also done a lot of research concerning the black family and is currently teaching several classes. Uh, and one of the classes that's pretty popular is the critical thinking class and the black literature class. Next is Dr. Richard King. Dr. Richard King has done several uh, notable works. Most well known, I think, is including Black Dot 1, 2, and 3. Uh, he's also done extensive study in the area of melanin and the effects of it on behavior and uh, both psychologically and physical uh, 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 functioning. Uh, and Dr. King is also prepared, I think, to uh, have some published information available to all of us soon. And um, last but not least is uh, Pamela George, who's a graduate student here on the campus and a psychologist. She's uh, uh, expecting to get a, a degree in clinical psychology in May. And she's also working at the Black Institute in Oakland, California. How distinguished this panel is, and that their credentials is unsurpassed here in Northern California, probably in North America in terms of the black family. We have enough knowledge and information available in the minds of, the, of this panel to generate the inspiration that's necessary for us to go to work and stop the decimation and the elimination of the black family. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to begin. Can you hear me here? To refute, um, I'm going to say, first of all, that power is the ability to define reality and have others respond to your definition as if it were their own. We need to regain our power to define our own reality. And by viewing this uh, small segment of the Bill Moyer special, we will be able to see how one man's power to, one man's uh, ability to define our reality is most indeed detrimental to our survival. Why don't we go with the tape? America called the invisible man. Ironically, the young black man today is anything. Tomani. Okay, now the response. Let's begin with two approaches. One is the issue of worldview. Two is the issue of a review of the black family as I see it. And third, in terms of what works for me as a black man, the product of a black mother and a black father, having grown up in the inner city of Watts, California, and having been here today. Uh, first, let's start with the lie, because this is a portrayal of a number of lies. We have to see it in the context of why that lie occurs now, and what is the purpose behind it. First, the fundamental lie that the black father does not want to take care of their children. That is an outrageous lie. I treat black men each and every day, and most of them are probably too pain even to even don't have money or resources even coming to see me. That when a, when a culture has so much oppression taking place in which the average are underemployed, and most all of them are uh, are really on slave wages or no wages at all, what money is there to support with? This is not out of a lack of desire. This is out of just a plain and simple oppression. Many black men are just paying to come to their families, to come to their children and have nothing to give. Time and time again, I've heard black mothers say, 
I've told them that if you just spend time with the kids, even that will help. But a black man often is proud and often hurts too much to open up those floodgates. But let's back up a bit more. The black family, as we see it in this country, exists in the context of more than the past 500 years of oppression. But how did this oppression come to be? And how did we on this panel come to be here? Titanic world struggle between two world cultures, a parent African culture, the Nile Valley civilization, which is a parent culture to all of humanity, from which the later forms of man, Homo erectus and thereafter, did migrate to other parts of the planet based a million years ago and thereafter. But that even prior to that time, there was an intact culture that did have families, that had thriving families, that clearly did survive and prosper in excess of the multi-millions of years. We have records in which in the emergence of the European culture, in which the first nation state, that is Greece, came to exist roughly in the year 332 BC, in the time of Macedonia and Alexander the Great, that even prior to that time in the 500th century with Solon, that he tried to provoke the priest to tell him all that he knew. And this is found in the book, The Priest of Ancient Egypt by Serge Sonoran. He said that he tried to provoke the priest to tell him all that he knew, and the priest said, after listening to Solon go on and on about the Greeks being the oldest people on the earth, the priest said, Solon, Solon, you Greeks are always children. Don't you know that there have been catastrophes that have occurred around the world and they have changed civilizations, they've essentially destroyed civilizations, but because Egypt has been spared such calamity, we have been able to kept, we've been able to include in our libraries the works of anything great or beautiful that has occurred any place in the world. That includes North and South America, and, and Europe as well as the various parts of Asia, be it west or east. And he, we, he went on to, after a calamity takes place, Africans had an intact culture and did indeed maintain it over the eons and that it was indeed European Africans coming home again to come in contact with their own parents. That is the framework that makes any kind of sense from a historical perspective as it can be backed up by archaeology and such. But we know that from that time there was indeed a series of repetitive invasions and oppressions nonetheless that were able to take hold not because of military might, but took place because of a change in geological epochs that turned North Africa into a wasteland, into a desert, and changed what used to be vast grasslands that were well inhabited to piles of sand, such that Egypt now has only 2% of its land being able to grow fog of many strong, valiant attempts to maintain African culture in the wake of repetitive invasions by Europeans, be it that Greece, be it that of, be it that of later Rome, be it that of the later mixed populations of Turkey and the even earlier ones of Assyria and Persia. These are ongoing battles that have taken place in the past basically 3,500 years, which from an African point of view is short because the African view is that of a multi-million year perspective. But again, the, the struggles that have taken place and the African migration and the African move that took place to excrete Greek taxation, to escape Roman exploitation, and we have to look at how these cultures did exploit. They exploited in the name of a world community, that is of a cultural imperialism, in which indeed at times the size of a multicolor fabric that racism was being allowed to grow and flourish. And then we later read the, the books by Kuhn that even point that how this took place in the gradual whitening of Christianity such that in later years, Africans could be forced into Christianity under the guise of being civilized, when in fact it was they who had, who had exposed the basic, the basic tenets of Christianity to, a, a, at that time, a so-called pagan Europe. So these are basic contradictions that really the world culture does not want it brought forward at all, the fundamental facts. But now we move on to a kind of current day perspective. We have to ask why now must Bill Morgan put this on national that of a current day popular movie, Color Purple, that has some issues about black family, no doubt, but goes to a zealous extreme to paint the black male as a subhuman rapist animal. And that is a common theme. I can't help but say, oh, is this not the same Steven Spielberg who was, the, who was involved in the production of Star Wars? It is not in Star Wars this malevolent force, Darth Vader, painted in an all-black costume with a black actor's voice, and yet he didn't, even, he didn't even get the paycheck to, to act. It was a white actor underneath his costume. And what's not the same one who said that they were fighting around this thing called the Force? 
And was this not this force, the very same things that I hear about in ancient Egypt? Is this not the same Stephen Pil Spielberg who is involved in, his, in the raising of the lost ark, the so-called recovering of the covenant? And we must ask the question, who are the black Hebrews? Who are the Canaanites in genocide? Who are these folks? And who were the so-called who were the so-called people who were Europeans of non-genetic? Hebrew? We're back to the same old game as the sister made known to my right. That we're about trying to shape worldview because we're at a very critical point in history. The point in history is one in which, after 500 years, the people are beginning to have control of their natural resources. That no matter how much we try to paint Africa as undeveloped, it is a fundamental fact that Africa sits atop 40% of proven oil reserves. It is a fact that the oil reserves of Sudan exceed that of Saudi Arabia. It is a fact that the oil reserves of Nigeria exceed that of, of Saudi Arabia. It is a fact that even in Saudi Arabia, we're talking about a basically a motley collection of basically black population with a mulatto population. We're also talking about things of so-called strategic metals. Metals that if they were to be stopped, this country or any other high-tech culture would cease to function within a matter of weeks. Things as like just cobalt, titanium, selenium, these are things that primarily come from places like Zaire in South Africa. And knowing that we know that South Africa can never be given freedom. That, is a, that that is the very core of the mineral wealth that the industrialized world depends upon, be you east or be you west. It makes no difference. The same hustle is, let's steal this African wealth. And it is that African wealth, be it the bodies of our people, or it be it their productive capacity that has fueled this industrial expansion that has occurred in the past 500 years, be it through slave African army must be maintained on the borders of Angola to make certain, as best they can, that freedom fighters from Angola do not return to South Africa. The same is true for other, uh, other parts that border on South Africa. Large numbers that are far exceeding the South African capacity even to maintain the troops on their borders. And it is just breaking down. People, there are not enough troops to go around. The borders are breaking down, be it European colonialism under the guise of capitalism, or be it communism under the guise of an Eastern racism as well. These borders are breaking down in a very real sense. We look at the Graham Rutman bill, we can clearly see that we're headed for five years of vast cuts which will, which will throw the bulk of those cuts on those who can least afford it. And when that occurs, the time bombs in our communities will explode. Basically, if you are hungry, you will do anything to eat. Fundamental fact. And in trying to eat, you will do anything to eat. And we can anticipate that the labeling of the black male and, and, and as, a, as a sideline, the labeling of the black female as a subhuman animal that just runs around and has sex without any thought to responsibility is a total lie. That is an attempt to set black folks up for death. That as we sit here in this room right now today, it is predictable that two to three years from today, these cities will explode again. It is predictable that there will be an attempt to take the focus off of the millions of very, very fundamental realities. But on to the issue of, that's, that, from my point of view, that's the reality as to why Bill Moyers must run his lie out. And I know that that is a corporate game, and there will be many others to come, and that will only increase to try to portray it. I know that the color purple is, has part of a strategic move, and that's not paranoid thinking. I know that the other books that we teach in our classes will never be presented on the national media well, for one simple reason. It paints black folks in a positive light, and, in, and a part of maintaining the oppression of a people is to continually focus on the lowest parts of their behavior. So that on the, on the getting back to the issue, I think I have probably, I'm squeezed out 10 more minutes perhaps, on the issue of the, of the black family, and especially with this group, the Black Psychological Association, Black Student Psychological Association, in ancient Africa, in the Nile Valley cultures, they had a view of psychology, a very elaborate view that I'm, a, that I'm certain is the basis for Sigmund Freud and others maintain their own view. For example, if you get a copy of the book, Freud, The Biologist of the Mind by Frank Sullaway, S-U-L-L-O-W-A-Y, you will find a picture of Freud's desk in Vienna, 1936, 
on which it says on top of his desk there's the manuscript to his late last book Moses and Carl Gustav Young about and there was a, a so-called collective unconscious memory that is a memory bank that contains the memories of all of our ancestors all of our blood ancestors so that we're more than what our physical bodies are we have a living ancestral bank and Freud also went on to throw another little point that Moses was considered to be an Egyptian and then gave evidence to hold forth. But of course, with your psychological students today, if you dare bring this book into class, you will be told a lie. The lie being that this was written in Floyd's waning years and when he got off his good works and was now was writing things that were substandard. But please recall, this book was written more than 20 years prior to his death in 1939. Also on, on, on Freud's desk were a number of statues statues of African gods, the god Osiris, the, god, the all black god